NASA, which previously selected SpaceX Starship for the Artemis initiative, has now declared its rejection, sparking discussion across the aerospace community. Despite this, SpaceX remains confident, bolstered by consistent progress in testing and hardware evolution. What sparked this unexpected tension, and what implications does it have for the future of Artemis and Starship? Meanwhile, Blue Origin's new Glenn has completed testing ahead of its second launch attempt, further complicating the growing commercial space race. Let's discuss it all in today's episode of NR Studio. A few years ago, NASA drew attention when it selected SpaceX's Starship to serve as the human landing system for the Artemis effort. At the time, NASA was under the direction of Administrator Jim Beinstein, who enthusiastically supported the choice, calling it a bold step toward re-establishing a human presence on the moon. However, in a surprising development, individuals who once expressed confidence in Starship have begun to voice concerns about it. This shift in perspective became evident during the American Astronomical Society's Von Braun Space Exploration Symposium held on October 29th. Beinstein, along with another former NASA administrator, Charlie Bolden, took part in a panel discussion focused on the current framework of the Artemis program. Much of the discussion revolved around SpaceX's Starship HLS, and both former administrators sounded the alarm about whether the program can meet its deadlines as currently structured. Beinstein expressed doubts about whether the U.S. can land astronauts on the moon before China's first crewed lunar mission, warning that time is limited. The window of opportunity to surpass China is shrinking rapidly, he said. We must adopt a different strategy. He further proposed that if the U.S. truly aims to put humans on the moon before China, NASA should consider a strategy similar to the Defense Production Act, a wartime policy designed to boost industrial production. If the goal is to surpass China in reaching the moon, he said we need a program similar to, shall I say, an initiative like the Defense Production Act. We must be fully committed to building a landing system as quickly as possible with a small empowered team, perhaps one authorized by an executive order from the U.S. president declaring reaching the moon ahead of China as a national security priority. Beinstein also made specific statements regarding Starship's design and development, acknowledging its long-term potential but expressing uncertainty about its readiness. Starship is a critically important vehicle for our future, he stressed, as it will be able to transport large payloads to low Earth orbit for long periods while lowering costs and increasing accessibility. However, if a lunar lander is needed, it will take time. He also supported the recent decision by NASA Acting Administrator Sean Duffy to open a competition for the Artemis III mission, suggesting that a new lander design may be crucial to accelerating the schedule. Charlie Balden, who held the position of NASA Administrator during Obama's presidency, supported Billenstein's worries. He highlighted issues related to the structure of the Artemis program and emphasized the importance of improved collaboration and time management. Balden concluded by expressing his belief that if prompt changes are implemented, NASA could successfully send astronauts back to the moon by the conclusion of the current presidential term. Both Billenstein and Balden brought up Blue Origin's Blue Moon Lander as a viable alternative or complementary option that could assist NASA in achieving its lunar objectives more quickly. Their statement seemed, whether deliberately or inadvertently, to cast doubt on SpaceX's central role in the Artemis program, and reignited discussions regarding whether the Starship development is advancing swiftly enough. SpaceX quickly reacted to their comments. The company defended its accomplishments and rebutted Billenstein's recent statements. SpaceX claimed that Mr. Billenstein's current criticism of Starship is either misguided or deliberately deceptive. During Mr. Billenstein's time as NASA Administrator, SpaceX was chosen to create and develop a human landing system for Artemis, alongside Blue Origin and Dynetics. The company further explained the reasons behind its selection. NASA ultimately picked Starship for the Artemis III mission through a fair and transparent competitive process after determining it was the best and least risky technical alternative and the lowest priced option by a substantial margin, as assessed by the civil servant team appointed by Mr. Billenstein to oversee the agency's exploration initiatives. 
SpaceX also reminded everyone that the decision was consistently reaffirmed even when protests and litigation from competing firms slowed the program's advancement. The decision to opt for Starship was repeatedly validated, despite the protests and lawsuits initiated by non-selected companies, which postponed the commencement of the contract work for several months, according to the statement. In conclusion, SpaceX issued a pointed criticism. Mr. Billenstein's recent suggestions advocating for a new landing system, including his reference to the Defense Production Act, are being misrepresented as though they reflect the impartial views of a former NASA administrator, which they do not. SpaceX's reply not only defended its integrity, but also asserted Starship's ongoing progress and potential. Starship remains the quickest method to return humans to the moon's surface, while being a vital component in realizing the Artemis program's aim of creating a lasting and sustainable human presence on the moon. The company noted that the latest images of the Starship HLS have captivated the aerospace sector, providing an unprecedented detailed view of the spacecraft SpaceX intends to utilize for returning astronauts to the lunar surface. These visuals are not merely captivating, they hold historical significance. For a considerable time, both fans and experts have deliberated on what the HLS variant of Starship might resemble. Now, the specifics are finally becoming clearer. The initial two pictures display the complete Starship HLS stack positioned on the launch pad, a spectacular sight that many have been eagerly awaiting. At a cursory glance, it may seem comparable to a conventional Starship launch setup, yet a more detailed examination uncovers crucial design distinctions specific to this lunar model. Among the most prominent alterations is observed in the forward part of the vehicle. Rather than the intricate collection of elements found in past prototypes, this iteration presents a sleek, polished look characterized by a single slender black line. This line likely signifies the division between the fuel reservoir and the crew area. In the revised design, the classic Starship cargo hatch is absent, substituted with a square opening crafted particularly to facilitate an elevator system. This elevator is intended to assist astronauts in traveling from the crew space down to the lunar terrain. Adjacent to this opening, there exists a series of small windows, presumably meant for observation, which adds a distinctly human element to the spacecraft's vast scale. These features suggest that Starship HLS serves a dual purpose, functioning not only as an exploration vehicle, but also as a temporary habitat for astronauts operating on the moon. As we examine the lower section, one of the most discussed features from the recent images is the incorporation of landing legs. This practical addition is crucial for initial missions where lunar infrastructure remains underdeveloped. The legs seem to extend out from the base, colored black and equipped with a mechanism resembling that of Falcon 9 boosters, albeit inverted in the direction of deployment. This design allows Starship to land stably on the irregular lunar terrain. Inside, SpaceX's latest graphics and design revisions unveil an interior that is significantly more sophisticated and spacious compared to earlier designs. The crew cabin now extends across multiple levels, interconnected by staircases located centrally for convenient movement. The most notable aspect is a high balcony that overlooks large windows, ideal for observing lunar missions or simply appreciating the stunning lunar views. The arrangement appears tidy, structured, and optimized for both practicality and comfort. In contrast to previous leaks, this setup offers a more feasible and hospitable environment for astronauts who might be on the moon for longer durations. According to the latest technical documents from SpaceX, the company continues to highlight the size and functionalities of Starship. The HLS model features a livable volume of 600 cubic meters, which constitutes about two-thirds of the entire International Space Station's volume. Additionally, it includes two airlocks, each having a volume of 13 cubic meters, thereby providing double the space available in the Apollo Lunar Module. This enormous capacity allows Starship HLS to transport large crews and significant payloads, with a maximum payload of up to 100 metric tons to the lunar surface. No lander, past or present, has ever matched such capabilities. SpaceX reiterated the financial benefits of the fully reusable Starship system, highlighting that it continues to fund much of the infrastructure necessary to achieve rapid reusability at low cost. The rocket's straightforward and scalable design aims to significantly reduce launch costs, facilitate frequent lunar missions, and advance NASA's long-term goal of maintaining a human presence on the moon. 
The company announced the achievement of 49 milestones as part of the HLS program, including life support testing, environmental control demonstrations, Orion integration, and landing leg assessments. The HLS capsule has been built, equipped with critical systems, and is currently undergoing final assembly. Next, SpaceX plans to test in-space refueling, vital for lunar missions, as well as unveil Starship V3 equipped with upgraded Raptor 3 engines. Numerous significant milestones are anticipated in the coming year as the Artemis deadline approaches. This update sends a powerful message. SpaceX remains confident in Starship HLS and aims to demonstrate consistent progress despite criticism and discussions within NASA. Each milestone reinforces a single belief, Starship will return humans to the moon. Do you think SpaceX will achieve this ambitious goal on time? Please share your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe to Orbitnalay for more information on humanity's journey into space. Meanwhile, as SpaceX continues to gain international attention, its main competitor, Blue Origin, has made significant strides in its efforts. The company's massive orbital rocket, New Glenn, is finally approaching its long-awaited maiden launch, expected to take place between November 9th and 11th. The momentous event occurred on October 30th when Blue Origin successfully conducted a static fire test at Cape Canaveral's LC-36. For 38 seconds, the rocket's 7B4 engine ignited, generating an astonishing 1,700 tons of thrust, marking substantial progress toward launch. Both founder Jeff Bezos and CEO Dave Limp celebrated the achievement, explaining that engineers extended the burn to replicate landing conditions, shutting down engines sequentially to assess fluid dynamics during throttle changes, which are crucial for booster recovery. Blue Origin confirmed that all engines performed as expected, indicating that the previously problematic BE-4 engine is now operating reliably. The test occurred despite earlier concerns about upper stage issues, but its success has re-energized the company's confidence in meeting its initial November launch schedule. The booster will then be returned for inspection as preparations continue for NASA's escapade mission, which aims to investigate the Martian magnetosphere. That's all for today's episode. See you next time.